Welcome to Canada's Social Changemakers. My name is Justin Douglas, and today we're here with Audrey Depot, National Manager of the Climate Reality Project Canada, which seeks to raise awareness amongst all Canadians about the urgency of the climate crisis. Well, thank you for being here, Audrey. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, so to start, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Climate Reality Project is? Well, uh, the Climate Reality Project was initially founded uh, by President or uh, Vice President Al Gore okay. um, in 2006. So basically, he had been giving these presentations on climate change uh, for a couple of years, and he, as you know, he worked on a movie called An Inconvenient Truth, and then he was approached by a few friends, a few uh, colleagues of his that that asked him if he'd be willing to train some volunteers to give the same presentation that he was giving because there was only so many presentations he could give personally. Um, and he ended up agreeing to, to training a group of people and eventually gave, him, gave himself the goal of training a thousand people oh, wow. uh, in the United States. And so that's where the trainings uh, started and he initially trained about 50 people and then another uh, thousand and a few Canadians took part took part in that training. Okay, and it's an international organization, obviously, it started in the States, mm -hmm. uh, but we have a Canadian contingent now, which mm -hmm. you were a strong force behind, so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the few, the handful of, of uh, Canadians that were initially trained in the United States that managed to, uh, to take part in that training came back to Canada and made themselves available to give presentations similar to Mr. Gore's presentation on climate change. And they realized uh, very soon that they couldn't keep up with the demand because back in, in 2007, 2008, um, a lot of people wanted to hear about climate change. There was a big hype around an inconvenient truth. Um, and uh, they couldn't keep up simply. So they decided to invite Mr. Gore to train Canadians here in Montreal. And at that training in 2008, they actually trained about 275 Canadians. Wow, with Al Gore here as well? With, yes, with Al Gore here. Very cool. And he he still gives the same trainings. Well, they've, they've evolved quite a lot since that 2008 training. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's still very much involved in uh, giving those Climate Leadership Corps trainings. So I'm a Canadian walking off the street and I'm like, oh, this sounds really cool. I want to learn about this. What would I sign up? What does a training include? So you would apply for the training, you'd get selected, the training is free of charge, and oh, cool. uh, it includes all of the materials, it includes most of the meals, um, and you're, wow. you're taken through uh, sessions on climate science, um, on climate policy, depending on, on where the training is taking place, so very often uh, policy uh, that, that is uh, relevant to that region. Um, you take part in a lot of communication sessions, so you build up your communication skills, uh, not just verbally, but mm -hmm. also uh, on social media, uh, how to interact with the media, how to get your story across, how to get the attention of uh, journalists mm -hmm. uh, in your city or, or your country, because some of our climate leaders have have managed to get a lot of attention, even at the national level. Mm -hmm. um, and we select climate leaders not just based on their knowledge of climate change, but you know, first and foremost on their passion and, and on their commitment to solve the issue. Uh, so we have people from all walks of life, from Incredible. literally every single uh, uh, age group, from every single sector. Uh, we have engineers, teachers, students, climate scientists, Wow. Um, and everyone learns something at the training. Great. So let's say I take the training. I think it's a great experience. And now I'm ready to go out into the world and do what? Um, well, yeah, there's a lot of options. So initially, the organization started as, you know, we train climate leaders who go on the, well, presenters, as they mm -hmm. were called originally. Uh, so we train you to be a presenter. And you go on in your community, in your school, in your workplace, and you give presentations similar to, to Mr. Gore's presentation. That's cool. Um, but it has evolved quite a lot since then. And now uh, that's why we don't, we don't call our volunteers presenters anymore, because it's a lot more than that. It's, we call them climate reality leaders. So they're invited to do uh, 10 acts of leadership, which can be presentations. It can be writing an op-ed. Uh, for their journal, it can be uh, keeping a blog on climate change. It can be offering a workshop on composting or, or whatever skill you wide have open. Yeah. that that applies to to 
to reducing greenhouse gases. Very cool. And getting people involved and more educated on the different mm -hmm. things. And then they can go and help share that knowledge with their own communities, mm -hmm. which is very, very cool. Yeah. So how does it look in Canada right now? What's the sort of makeup, let's say, of Canadian volunteers and, and of the organization right now? Well, we have about 700 uh, climate reality leaders that are active throughout the country. Wow, that's, um, that's on impressive. A, on, on a global total of about 11,000 that have been trained. Um, so those climate reality leaders uh, still do give a lot of presentations. Uh, mm. they, they took part in, in 2016, we invited them to take part in the federal consultations on climate change. A lot of them did. Uh, a lot of them organized town halls actually as, as part of that federal consultation where citizens were invited to organize their own town halls. Um, some of them submitted uh, scientific memos uh, to the, the process. Uh, we're inviting them to take part not only in, in you know, community-wide uh, initiatives like planting a garden and, and you know, pushing for, for uh, composting programs and so on, but mm -hmm. also in uh, the uh, decision-making process, the policy-making process. So we're not, we're not a lobbying organization, mm -hmm. we're really a grassroots organization. We, we just want to make sure that citizens have their say, that, that they take part in the policy-making decision of, of all levels, really, of government. Which is so needed right now in this country to get people involved. So I'm a huge yeah. fan of what you guys are doing. But uh, let's talk about maybe about what some of the priorities are for the organization at this point. What do you guys identify as some of the biggest climate challenges in Canada right now? Well, there's many of them, uh, of course. Um, obviously, one of the one of the big hot topics and one of the big priorities is to make sure that uh, you know our economy is is able to transition to a low carbon focus mm -hmm. so that we're able to diversify our economy, that we're able to strengthen the clean technology mm -hmm. uh, a sector um, and that we're able to, to eventually um, get ourselves off of the fossil fuel dependency right. Right. That, that is uh, such a big problem. Uh, and a very big issue in this country right now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So that's one of the things that we're following very closely. Some of our climate reality leaders uh, know the issue very well and are engaged uh, mm -hmm. more hands-on on the issue. Um, another, another topic that we're tackling this year is uh, city-level climate action because oh, cities, cities are actually the key to, to reducing greenhouse gases. So there's been a lot done at the provincial level. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some some successes at the federal level or we're going to see how how that plays out in the next it's couple of years. It's too early to tell at this point. It's yeah. too early. Yeah. Um, but at the at the city level there's you know a handful of cities that are really champions on the issue that are leading. Vancouver, Victoria, my home city is. Absolutely. <laughs> so Van Vancouver is, is one of those cities that's leading and actually the, the one of the people that uh, spearheaded the transition Andrea Raymer oh, okay. uh, is one of our climate reality leaders. Oh, nice. and so we have people, people like Andrea, um, you know, that have infiltrated all spheres of life and all sectors, and that Great. are really leading the way. And so really, we're really, really proud to have her uh, yeah. in our family. And so we're what we're trying to do is to have those successful initiatives replicated throughout the countries, in mm -hmm. not only in large cities but also in, in smaller uh, yeah. cities and towns. And I, I think the key to doing that is, you know, what we're often told is that there's, there's three ingredients that can be missing to, to climate action. Either there's no political will mm -hmm. or uh, no public support, so the public's not behind, you know, the transition. Um, or the, the, the city is just missing the tools and the funding. So, you know, yeah. it generally it's one of those three ingredients that's lacking or more than one. We want to. We want to essentially have those citizens, those climate reality leaders, and and other volunteers that we are uh, um, inviting in the progress, essentially, uh, to converge in in different locations to meet with their local representatives and see what's missing and how they can help. So, in some cases, the volunteers are going to be uh, um, gathering that that public support, educating. Uh, that's that's a very big part of it, actually, educating the rest of the community. Um, on the urgency of the climate crisis. That's, that's why we, we were founded in the first place and that's still the, the core of our mandate is to educate the public. Um, and uh, in some cases we're going to be having uh, individual meetings or, or group meetings with 
elected representatives, with uh, city staff uh, to bring that knowledge to them as well. So it's, it's still an education mission, very much so. Um, and, and we've actually just launched uh, in late April an initiative called the Community Climate Hub. And that initiative uh, is, is essentially going to be, uh, well, already started, uh, building uh, hubs which are groups of citizens uh, that include climate reality leaders, of course, um, other volunteers and other interested individuals uh, that want to accelerate the transition to uh, low carbon economies, low carbon communities. Very cool. And uh, they, in many cases, include elected officials as, as a part of the group. Good. We want to make sure that those people communicate efficiently, that they give themselves a, a clear uh, roadmap, clear deadlines, uh, that they give themselves a climate action plan that is not only ambitious and efficient, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. a climate action plan that serves the needs of the community. That have uh, that that has multiple uh, co-benefits, so social benefits right. um, that everyone uh, can can adhere to. So great, I'm everyday Canadian on the street, and I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. I want to get involved in this. How can I learn more about you? How can I get involved in your organization? Well, you could either apply for a climate leadership core training, or instead, if mm -hmm. you don't want to go through the training, if you don't want to travel. Um, you could uh, sign up for one of those climate uh, community climate hubs. Um, so just go to climatehub.ca or climatereality.ca. You'll find the information there too. Um, and you can join one of those hubs in your city. And if there's no hub in your city yet, there will likely be one uh, in the next few months. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're rolling out this campaign, of community climate hub, uh, gradually. Uh, cool. with about five cities at a time and, and building up until great. we've reached a... Uh, Very yeah. cool. That's really great. Because I also, I feel like some people, you know, we vote and you just want our leaders to solve all the problems for us, but we have to get off the couch and get involved and be active. And sometimes it, as an individual, it feels hard to yeah. find other people who have similar values and similar goals. And so this is great that you're able to bring those people in and connect them. And I think it's a very, very cool project that you're doing. So mm -hmm. for anybody who hasn't checked it out yet, please go visit climatereality.ca where you can get more information. Consider volunteering. And uh, Al Gore's second movie will be coming out very soon, An Inconvenient Truth 2. Right? So an I, inconvenient sequel. An inconvenient sequel, sorry. So I imagine <laughs> that will also probably stimulate the conversation again. Uh, so at that point, make sure that you guys are part of the conversation and getting off your couch to make change in this country. So thank you so very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I'm really thankful that you're here. The stuff that you guys are doing is really great. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs>